In this presentation, we're going to go through how to program our VEX pneumatics. Let's get started. Okay, now that we have the single acting cylinder working manually, let's see if we can't get it to work with this solenoid. Um, the first thing I want to show you how to do is how to plug the cable in. There's one end um, that's our regular three-wire PWM cable that's going to go to the cortex. Um, the other end is going to plug into the solenoid, and it really will only go in one way. Um, it is kind of keyed, and there is this little clip, this little foot here that will help it snap into place. Um, so all I have to do is push it in, and it will snap in. Um, to get it back off, all I have to do is lightly, you don't have to jam on it, you just have to lightly depress that foot and it'll allow that clip to open up and you can take it off. Okay, so a big thing here is I can notice that this is 5 volt DC and I know that the Cortex motor ports are running at 7.2. So that's too much for this. Um, we can actually run it at an extremely low voltage. Um, so I'll go ahead and snap this end in. And then this end, remember black is always going to go to the outside. We're actually going to plug it into a digital input. Um, and so we're going to turn that digital input into a digital output. And that will allow us to control that with low voltage. So as we look over here, we can see that we have 1 through 12 to plug into. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug into 1. Okay, so I'm plugged into digital input one, and I'm going to go into motor since it's set up here in a minute, and I'm gonna turn that into a digital out instead of a digital in. Okay, so we have our solenoid. Now all we have to do is connect our solenoid up to our reservoir and then to our cylinder. Um, so we gotta make sure we're on the right side, and remember this side says P and R for pressure and R release. So I'm going to apply pressure directly to our shutoff valve and then I'll apply A um, over to our cylinder. Okay, so as soon as I open this up, remember um, this, this valve shouldn't do anything by default uh, until I apply electricity to it. So as soon as I apply electricity to it, it should open that gate and allow the cylinder to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my um, shutoff valve. Okay, so nothing has happened, and now all I need to do is hop over to Robot C and do some quick programming, and hopefully that should allow my cylinder to go in and out. Okay, now that we're over to Robot C, let's write up a simple program. So I'll go to Motors and Sensors Setup. I'm going to make sure I'm on the Digital Sensors tab, and I'm going to go to Digital 1. This is going to be my solenoid, S-O-L-E-N-O-I-D. And because this is a microcontroller, it's going to allow me to change that port type. So it's no longer going to be an input, and it's going to become an output, just like it was when we did the VEX LEDs. So that's now a digital out, and apply. And OK. OK, so let's write up a real simple program. So I'm going to go to Control Structures, Natural Language, and we'll do a repeat forever. Okay, and then we're going to replace the body with a couple of weights and some turning on and off the solenoid. So I'm going to come over to my natural language, I'm going to go to my weights, and we'll bring over a weight, and I think two seconds is going to sound good. Okay, so it's this next one that's really the tricky part, is how do you turn on a digital out? So I'm going to come down here to the sensors, and I'm going to go to variables, and I want this last one that says sensor value. I'm going to drag that over, and inside the square brackets, I'm going to put the name of the sensor that I have. So instead of digital 1, we gave it a name, S-O-L-E-N-O-I-D. And now we're going to have to assign that to a state, either on or off. So 1 equals sign, 1. Remember, 2 equals sign is going to evaluate, and 1 equals sign is going to assign. I do need a semicolon to finish that. And then we're going to repeat that. So I'm going to copy it. And we'll paste it. And we'll wait for our two seconds. And then this time, we're going to change the state to a 0. So repeat forever. Wait two seconds. Then it's going to turn on the solenoid. Wait for two seconds. Turn off the solenoid. Then cycle back up for a wait for two seconds, and so on. And it should repeat that forever. OK, so let's make sure we have everything set up. My 
My shutoff valve is open. I have air inside the tank. My solenoid is set up and it's plugged in. I'm in digital one. I have communication with the Cortex and all I need to do is turn the power on for my battery. I have green lights on both. I'll go ahead and download to the robot. And I can see down here in my debugger window that my initial value should start off as a zero and we'll hit start. Now the big question is, how many times is it going to do that? Well unfortunately, you got to remember that since this is pneumatics, every time it does it, not only am I sending air out, but then I'm exhausting that air, unlike hydraulics where I get to reclaim it. So I'm going to be able to do it for several times, but not that many times at full force. Um, as this continues to run, I'm going to continue to lose pressure inside this tank. Well is there anything that I can do about that? Let's go ahead and stop this and take a look at it. So right now, the only volume I have is the volume that's inside here. So we looked at the compressor that we used earlier, and that was a fairly large compressor. Compressors come in a lot of different sizes, and it has to do with the tank size, but I can't create more air. So if I can't create more air, what I would like to do is have more air. I would like to have more air so that I can maintain a higher pressure for a longer period of time. So what can I do? What are my options? Okay, so here's the challenge. The challenge is we have only a certain amount of air to begin with. We don't have a compressor to be able to continue to produce more air. We know that each time we use the solenoid, it's going to use air and exhaust air. So what we need is more air to begin with. So what are our options? Well, what I want you to try to do is compare this cylinder to a battery. So this is a AAA battery, and if I look on here, I can see that a AAA battery is one and a half volts. Um, so how do these two compare with each other? Well, right now, this is a one and a half volt AAA battery. So what I need is this battery. Wait, those aren't the same. Well, they are. This is one and a half volts as well. This just happens to be a AA battery. So why do we have them different? Because this has more of it. Um, it's going to take a longer period of time to be able to deplete this double A than it is this triple A. And then all the way up to this battery. So this is a D battery. Oh man, this must be a lot of voltage. Well, no, this is one and a half volts as well. Um, this is just a lot more of it. So that's why you see this used in flashlights and things that are designed to run for long cycles. So each one of these is a tank. Each one of these is holding exactly one and a half volts but it's holding it for one and a half volts for a longer period of time? But yeah, that's the idea. So this little tank, I need to be able to make this tank bigger. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have any bigger tanks. So what are my options? What I can do is combine two tanks. So I have put two quick connects, uh, push connects on both ends of here. I have my Schrader valve on this end, and instead I now have my shutoff valve coming out of one. So both of these have 80 PSI in them, and together they're going to work as if they were one larger battery, and it now just has two cells. And I could do it again, and I could have a three cell compressor system, or a four cell, or a five cell, um, and each one will lose just a little bit on each cycle. Um, so this is going to give me the ability to run my project more times at a higher PSI before I start losing that throughout the entire thing. Because remember, Pascal's formula tells me that it's the same everywhere. So I just have more of it now, and it's going to take a longer period of time to be able to lose it. Okay, that's great. Okay, so now that we have our single acting working, should this be any more complicated to wire up and program the double? Well, no, it shouldn't be. Um, so we have our solenoid, we have our double acting cylinder, and we have the same cable. So it's going to plug in the same way. I'm going to plug it into the same port. And now all we have to do is plug it in. Okay, so we've got to remember that I have A and B on this side. I have P and my two R's. So my P is what's going to go to my shutoff valve. And I now need two pieces, one that's going to go to my retract, 
And again, it really doesn't matter which one you do. Um, it just kind of matters maybe in your setup on which one do you want to be active first. And then we'll go ahead and plug our last one into our other port. Okay, so this should be it. And I should be able to just reutilize the program that I already wrote. So I'll go ahead and open up the valve. I'll go ahead and hold on to it. And I'm going to turn on the power to the Cortex. Go back over to Robot C. I'm going to use the exact program that I've already written. I will download the robot. And I'll start my cycle. And again, the question is, why is it retracting so fast, but sending out so slow? Uh, remember, it has to do with this speed control that's on the end here. So being able to send it in is going fast. Being able to send it back has to do with how it's allowing it to come back through here. So I can send out, and it's still going to get out the same amount of pressure, and then it's going to retract back faster. So the one thing I do want you to think about is cycle time is actually important. You can't just turn the solenoid on and turn the solenoid off. Um, if you do, then your cylinder is probably not going to reach full stroke or full length. Um, so every time you put in a program, you have to have some type of weight before you turn it back off. If you just said solenoid on, solenoid off, it would just click and cycle through it so fast that it really wouldn't do anything. So I do have to think about that a little bit. Um, here I'm able to control two of them at the same time, a single acting and a double acting. This is pretty cool.